Welcome to Just Cook It Radio, hosted by Chef Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. Just Cook It Radio is about food, life, and everything in between. And now, your hosts of Just Cook It Radio, Mario and Bill. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV, Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I am Mario Pareca, here with Bill Alexander. Yeah, kind of different. We're in the old studio today. Feels like the old days. (laughs) (laughs) Can you dub that song in, It Feels Like the First Time? No, no, no. Anyhow. Are we even allowed to mention that? I don't think so. Okay, (laughs) forget we did. (laughs) Anyway. Today, we got a big show coming right at you, um, all about turkey. Hey, Thanksgiving's next week. That's right. Hard it's, to uh, believe. It's coming fast. I mean, I'm not complaining that it's coming fast, but something we look forward to, it's turkey talk. Not only is that coming fast, but next Saturday's show is our one-year anniversary here on 590 Radio WMBS. And you will not be in studio. Shh, don't tell anybody that. <laughs> You will be. You will, your I'll voice will be I'll present. Be, I'll be there, but I won't be there in person. <laughs> so... <laughs> the first thing I want to mention, Shh. we'll just, again, there's a couple things in that for opening <laughs> segment that we're just going to kind of glaze over. Yeah. But um, gla- that's, there's another that's thing a good glaze yeah, over. The pun intended. Unintended, intended. But anyway, what we're going to do today is we have a, a, something I want to cook really quickly, but I want to preface this by saying if you checked out, please check out my video at heraldstandard.com. It was all about turkey. This is all about turkey this week. So my column ran on Thursday, all about turkey. There's a video that accompanies that column that's at heraldstandard.com okay. where I showed you how I make my turkey. Yeah. The recipe's in the, in the column, but I show you how to make it, and I show you how to carve it. And there's one little piece of that puzzle that we didn't have time to do. Oh, okay. And we're going to do it here. Sounds good. So if you, if you want to know how to make it, the turkey from top to bottom, if you put the two pieces together, you'll get it. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you and Bill – what I base my turkey with. Now, this isn't just for turkey. I based almost all my meats with this. Okay. I based a lot. Or I, you know, you can use this as a sauce for fish. It goes great with halibut and different fish. I know food. there's a lot of butter. So, yes. That's one thing I do see is a good bit of, so, of butter sitting next right. to us. We have a pound of butter right here, and I have my burner here. I'm going to put it on low. Okay. okay? And what we're going to do is we're just going to start. I'm going to put all four sticks, which is a pound. That's a lot of butter. Of butter right into this pan. Okay. <laughs> I feel my arteries clog already. No, don't. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. It's so, Thanksgiving, that's right. Yeah, well, I, I tend to use this all year round, but you're not going to use all of this in one Oh, recipe, okay. okay. Kind of worried me there this for This is like a, uh, think about olive oil. You have a whole bottle, yeah, you right. don't use the whole bottle at right. once. This is that kind of the sense. same principle. So what we're going to do is we got our butter on, we got our burner on low, we're just going to let it go. Okay. Okay. And what we're making is brown butter. Oh, okay. oh, we've talked about this we before. We have, and I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Like I said, you can use it as a sauce. Okay. You can use it as, you know, green beans, almondine. I usually coat that my almonds good. in brown butter before I put them over the green beans. Um, I baste your turkey with it. I baste my turkey okay. with it every year. When I roast chickens, I baste it. When I make steaks, I brush them with brown butter. So all you're basically doing is browning butter. That's what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, you're not doing anything you. special. No. You're adding anything to it. No, absolutely It's just not. melting just butter. Well, you're going to melt it and you're going to brown it. Now, there's a technique because if you let it go too long, yeah. you'll end up with black butter, which <laughs> tastes burnt. <laughs> burnt. If you, don't, if you pull it off too soon, you just have regular okay. melted or clarified butter okay. if you separate the milk salt. So Makes sense. Brown butter is known in its French terms as bernoisette. It's a very complicated uh, yeah, word. Yeah, you, you can say that. It literally means hazelnut butter. Why it's hazelnut? literally translate. Well, I don't know if it's translated to, but that's what it's known as because it tastes of ha- toast oh, does it hazelnut. Oh, I did not know it's that. It's got a very nutty flavor to it when it's done. Sounds good. And great. it reminds you of hazelnuts. So okay. basically what happens is when the butter melts, and you do it over low heat because it you know, it gives you more time to really watch it and really take care of it, it separates into the butter fat and the milk solids, which okay. are the two parts of the butter. The milk solids, they naturally sink to the bottom of the pan, and you leave them over that gentle heat so then they begin to brown. And then you'll see with that as it happens here. And then you'll see the, uh, the uh, uh, foam rise to the top as okay. it melts. And when that foam comes to the top, you watch that foam. And as soon as you start to see brown speckles on top of the foam, you strain it, which I have our strainer, strainer right there. here. Okay. And uh, you strain that, and then what's left is brown butter. Sounds good. Hey, the other thing we need to talk about today is because we've talked about the dressing, mm-hmm. mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. And you did the turkey this week in the paper. Mm-hmm. We need to talk about other side dishes. And I know there's one side dish out there that our friend Ryan can't stand. No. And you, and you and you don't care for it either, but it's a staple around every Thanksgiving and Christmas table. And that is the green bean casserole <laughs> with the french's onions on top the french the, the 
jarred onions <laughs> <laughs> and the, the the cream of soup or whatever that comes in that can that's cream of mushroom soup it's like here's I mean, a can of good. sodium but, dump it right but if on you top. don't have it on the table everybody keeps wondering where it's at well i'm let me let me say i'm not opposed to green beans okay. at all right. i love green beans right. they're one of my favorite and harry cover even more so which are just a little tinier yeah skinnier, i've had those baby yeah. green yeah. beans but I just don't feel that, that mixing them with <laughs> condensed soup and putting the canned onions on top. Now, if we make a green bean casserole from scratch, then maybe I could get well, into that. How would you more. do that? Well, you'd have to make a, a, a cream sauce. Okay. And then you would cook your green beans and fold them into the cream. And I'd probably put roasted shallots in it and roasted that garlic. Would be good. Like we use the roasted shallots I for like the stuffing. That. I like and that. And then I would fry some shallots. I would uh, fry them. To cook right. the top after it's done baking, oh, okay. and you can I even mean, put breadcrumbs. So in you with could them actually too. do a variation, so, yeah. of that. What I would probably do, which makes is sense. I would panko the top and uh. bake it so that it has that crispy top. Right. And then when you pull it out, you can take, and I would even probably put some almonds in there to kind That'd of play green beans almond That would good. And brown butter, obviously. And then once you pull it out, you could take, you could fry some shallots. You could cut them into like small rings. I think you flash need fry them before next Thursday. You need to put a. Uh, green bean casserole recipe on the website <laughs> i really do. on the spot yeah why not like, we could come up with something i'll I have think, to look into I, that i mean i think it would be but really you'd make good. It, i'd probably i'd make a bechamel and okay. then you could flavor it with the with you know your shallots your garlic all that stuff i just like i said you can even, you could put mushrooms in it right i mean i'm not opposed to mushrooms at all but the people at campbell's would be so hurt if you didn't use their soup well let's have them on the show so they can make their case <laughs> <laughs> if they want to call in and if campbell's by in, if they want to sponsor the show We'll, we'll change we'll our mind. Yeah, quickly. we'll use yeah. Campbell's soup for everything. <laughs> I'll put Campbell's soup in my brown butter. <laughs> it's not possible. Speaking but of that, your butter is melting, by You the can way. see it. Yes, it's melting. Yes. And uh, so that's that's a good sign. That's you can the first smell step. It too. So we're going to make brown butter, and that's what we use to baste your turkey. And there's we're going to have some turkey talk here um, because there's a lot of questions people have about turkey. And when you look at a roasted turkey, it's not uh, a crazy thing. It's just a turkey. Right. That's roasted They're like a chicken. Right. You know, people are so used to roasted chickens. But the turkey seems to be that thing that you do on special occasions. And, and except in my household. We right. actually have turkey multiple times a year. Yeah, well, I'll make turkey uh, more than just it uh, on Thanksgiving. But right. when I do, I don't make the whole bird. I right. just make, like, the breast fronts. Right, and, we, and we've had the breast fronts. And even a smaller turkey that we would do if we have a get-together or something, even in the spring. It mm-hmm. will be made. I mean, it's well, nice. That's my, my my thing, too. When Even at Thanksgiving, no matter how many people you have, I'm always an advocate of two smaller birds as opposed Close to one large one. bird. It just it makes it uh, so much easier to cook the smaller birds without them drying out. Which is, yeah. And they're just easier to control, you know, and easier to work with. So if, if you, you know, that's my that's my uh, advice to you. If you want to get the 30-pound bird, what? be my guest. Now, what do you figure... Uh, the weight size. I mean, if you're looking at 30 pounds of bird, how much meat do you actually get off a 30 pound bird? Well, I, I'm not quite sure the answer to that, but what I can tell you is when you're planning for people, g- the general ratio is a pound of bird per person. Okay. Okay, that's what you generally take in. So if you're going to have 20 people, then you want 20 pound bird. Okay. Um, and if you want that leftovers, sense. then plan for a pound and a half. Oh, okay. Per person. Okay. So. That's the way that you can kind of think about how, how big of a turkey you need to get. Right. Um, and that's the general rule of thumb. That's what we always did. That's how we always calculated it. So, again, if you have 20 people, you want 20 pound, a 20-pound turkey or two 10-pound two ten turkeys or, you know, something now along those lines. Wonder if you, what, what if you're using a tofu turkey? A tofurkey? A tofurkey. I don't even uh, <laughs> realize that those exist. I don't even recognize <laughs> them. I don't believe in them <laughs> because, first of all, I don't believe in tofu. I Why mean, not? I know what I'm going to It's the whole it's soy my turn, thing. It's my turn to make the Japanese angry yes. here. So. Okay. No, yeah, it's the soy thing. So a lot of soy is GMO. Right. It's not. I mean, I don't think tofu is disgusting. I've eaten it, and it's one of those things that we used to use for salad dressings to make them oh, really? fat. Oh, really? As opposed to, like, a mayonnaise-based dressing, we use tofu. Yeah. And it would work. Like, we could make it. We used to make a tofu ranch dressing. Okay. It just like ranch, but it was half the fat, half the calories. Okay. Um, but the issue, like, again, that I have is soy is not one of the best things to consume on a regular basis especially it's very high gmo and it's very acidic and it actually studies have shown can cause an increase in estrogen oh in i didn't realize that really so yeah so it's not a not one of the things that i that i promote huh. eating Interesting. so the tofurkey 
mm, not my thing. <laughs> okay, well, let's take our, our first break. Okay. And uh, we'll come back and talk more turkey yeah, and more, brown butter. More turkey talk. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you pick your bird because there's so many different kinds on the market, how you pick which one you get. And then we'll talk about the brining versus no brining thing. Okay. And we got a lot of fun turkey chat, turkey talk coming up. So don't touch that radio dial. Just Cook It is served up to you today by the Big Barn Country Store in Delhi, by Perekka Chiropractic Center, Inc., by 4th Street Barbecue, by the Herald Standard, and on FCTV by Phil Giannetti Motors. And you're watching Just Cook It here on Faya TV Channel 77 and also at JustCookIt.tv. And you're listening to Just Cook It Radio here on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti's a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com. Thank you for watching Just Cook It Radio right here on Channel 77. I am Mario Pereca. And I'm Bill Alexander. If you like what you've seen so far, you can watch the program in its entirety at justcookit.tv for food, life, and everything in between. Good to have you back. You're listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV, Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I am Mario Pareca here with Bill Alexander. And if you want to give us a call, the number 855-590-0590 always works. It's toll free, so give us a buzz and let us know what you're thinking. Um, our butter is... If you listen closely, you can hear it. Okay, and you can see the white foam that's on the top. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Look at it. it. I'll kind of tilt it. I don't want to disturb it because you don't want to really move this around a lot when it's cooking, but hopefully you can Keep going. see in the pan. Okay. And we'll just let that continue to cook and let that go in that white foam. We'll just watch it, and soon you'll see little brown speckles at the so, top. Of so, it. in other words, a watch pot does boil. As the old uh, wives tell you, say a, a watch pot never boils. Yeah, it's it, it makes it feel like, and I've done that before when you're in a bind and you need it to boil, and it makes it feel like forever, like it takes hours. Well, that boil. was like the other night. Uh, I was making dinner, and I had three hungry kids, and I made our favorite craft macaroni and cheese. Oh yeah. And and getting That's the the stuff. water to boil was uh, it t seemed like it took forever. Yeah, that you'll have that, especially with craft macaroni and yeah. cheese. But um, so back to turkey talk. Sure. Right oh, here on just before that, I forgot to mention we're in our Shiner studio. Yes. In our secret location secret somewhere in Uniontown. Yes, the underground cave. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I've said too much. Psh. First rule of Shiner studio. Yeah, never you never tell anybody. About Shiner studio. <laughs> but, um, but we will be getting Shiners here real soon. Yeah, I can't wait for that. That's the be white stuff. winged. The White Wing Belgium, which yeah. will be coming I soon. I love Belgium beers, yeah. too. Especially and you know what? I listened to last week's program when we talked about it, mm -hmm. and I didn't catch it in studio when you said it that you would not put fruit in yours. No. I never caught that, and I'm listening to it the other day, and I'm going, huh, he did say that he wouldn't put fruit in it. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had fruit in it before. I just. I feel don't like get the fascination behind it. I feel like if it's a good if it's a good beer, which I've come to know Shiner yes. has a good beer, that it doesn't need that. No. That, you know, it stands up to itself. Just like, much like the mashed potatoes and the gravy that we talked about last right. week. If it's a good enough potato, it doesn't need gravy. It doesn't gravy. need gravy. So I, that's just my opinion. So when we try our Shiners, I will not have fruit in my beer. <laughs> <laughs> but good. <laughs> unless you want it, then I can no, grab some for no, you. No, 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 no. But, um, okay, so. A beer at 10 a.m. Or at 9 a.m. That's going to be interesting. Oh, have you ever tailgated? Mm, yeah, well, yeah tailgating? I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's true. We'll just pretend we're tailgating. There's college football on. Yeah, but we're not allowed to do it on the radio. There's those FCC regulations. Well, we're not going to get intoxicated. We'll do it during breaks. So that way we yeah. can't get in trouble. We're doing a tasting. There you go. So, Like wine. <laughs> there yeah, you go. We can spit. You did that at Repepi's, so I guess yeah. it'd be okay. Yeah, that was fun. That was okay. good. Yeah. Wine, beer, same stuff. Anyway, not really, but, you know, <laughs> same principle, I should say. Not sure. Same stuff. So let's talk some turkey. Now, one of the most confusing things when it comes to turkey is what kind do you buy? Because okay. They have so many different types of turkey out there. And the truth be told, a lot of them are very, very similar. I would have never guessed. So <laughs> they just, you know, they do different things. So I have a chart. I'm going to read some okay, of these. Okay, sure. Just so hopefully we can understand 
um, more about turkeys and what type you, you would not prefer to buy. Us personally, for my family, we get turkeys from a local farm. Right. They're raised there. They're all, you know, taken care of, free mm-hmm. range, organic, the whole nine yards. And they're local, and they're really, really good turkeys. Mm-hmm. But you can get them at the supermarket as well. So let's read it. The first one I want to talk about is free range, because you see free range yes. turkeys. Um, free range, what the free range label means is that it's a bird that is not raised in a cage. It's free to graze on any grass or grains it can find in its pen. It's a humane bird. Yeah, which is generally considered a more humane and healthy poultry farming process. So the USDA uh, inspects all poultry processors that carry the term free range okay. to ensure that the, uh, the birds really are allowed to access, access to the outdoors. So you can find free range turkeys at larger supermarkets or specialty markets near locals farmer markets. I know that uh, when my wife gets ours, it's usually a free range, and yeah. she gets it from Giant Eagle. So. Okay. Giant turkey. Giant turkey, <laughs> yeah. The big so bird. <laughs> the big bird. Okay, so the next one is organic turkeys. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> the no or- GMOs is what you're telling the or- me. The organic label is re- it's regulated by the USDA, okay. and it requires that all turkeys sold as organic be, be raised free range okay. without the use of antibiotics and fed organic and vegetarian diets of grains and grasses that have not been treated with, pesticide, with pesticides. So organic birds you could get at uh, higher-end supermarkets, and they come fresh or frozen from a lot of so online sources. So whole foods... Um, Giant Eagle, the, uh, oh, the the market districts, the market districts mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Okay, I saw, I actually at our local, my local Giant Eagle, I found that they had uh, they do organic, but just a few. They didn't have like they had the huge freezer case, yeah, filled with all the the butterball and yeah, the, you know well, those of course. Ones. And then they had one little section on the <laughs> side that had about three or four <laughs> organic now, nature's basket okay, turkeys. Okay, my question here because I know this drives you crazy. Do they have the pop up thermometer in them? I don't know. <laughs> I, I should have inspected better, but I that pop up thermometer it's really good for one thing thrown away okay because it's just it's not good if, if, if you have your bird in the oven long enough for that thing to pop up yeah it's going to be it's dry. dry so just you know I, I don't recommend it so so are you going to give get, be on the phone line on thursday so people can call with <laughs> the butterball turkey line. it'll be the just cook it turkey, just cook line. It turkey line yeah we can see what we can see what happens <laughs> that'd be kind of interesting <laughs> mario help 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 <laughs> If you if you were around to be to play I for, secretary, I forgot to thaw the bird. How long does it take? And I have that's another thing that, that needs discussion about thawing. <laughs> and I learned a valuable lesson about that the other day, which yeah. we'll talk about later in the program. But the next t- type of turkey you can get is natural. So unlike the organic designation, there's no government guarantee to back up the natural label. Okay. So natural turkeys are generally cheaper than organic, obviously, and they're right. often. Uh, of comparable quality, but not all natural turkeys are create are created equal. Okay. Obviously, it says here. Um, you have to read the label to see if the bird is uh, is antibiotic free, free range, and or raised on a vegetarian diet. Um, just because many products will say that they're natural, but also say that they're hormone free, but that doesn't really matter when it comes to poultry because all poultry yep. it has to be hormone free, including Why is that? including chicken and eggs. Because the USDA has not approved the uh, use of hormones okay. in poultry. Okay. So the increasing popularity and marketability so of no natural GMOs turkeys. There. Um, there could be GMO in the feed. In the feed, but not right. in the... Okay. It's but they don't inject it with... I got you. Know, you. I got stuff. you. Our butter's cooking away here. Um, the next one is kosher. Koshers are, you know, they're formed according to the Jewish dietary customs. So the ra- you know they have to have the rabbi supervise them and that and whole thing, yeah. But if you're getting a kosher turkey, chances are that's your faith and you follow that. So right. I don't really need to get into right, it because you right, do right, or right. you don't. Um, then you have your self-basted turkeys. Um, How does a turkey baste itself? Well, they uh, they they're usually frozen and they usually inject the meat with a solution We're not set of up salt, smoke alarms, butter, right? oil. I hope not. <laughs> it's not smoking that much. No. Um, so they usually inject the meat okay. with like a solution of salt, butter, oil. <laughs> so uh, the self-basted turkeys, I really don't recommend either, just yeah. because you don't know what they're putting into Ooh, the right. bird. And not only that, um, you're not going to get as much turkey flavor because you're kind of watering the meat down yeah. with those things. Um, then you have finally your heritage birds. Your heritage are farmed using techniques that mimic pre 1920 style poultry. Oh, interesting. Production. I didn't know that. So, from the 1920s to the 1960s, turkeys were selectively bred to create a plumper, broader breast. Okay. By the 1960s, the only type of turkey available 
was the suggestive named broad breast white. Right. Also less appealing, known as the standard supermarket turkey. Now, where does the butterball so, fall into this? That would be, um, that would probably be like the self-basted. Okay. Um, you, they probably are the natural. Okay. Probably okay. a lot of them say natural on them. So, th- uh, those are your main categories of turkey. Um, th- and the ones that we talked about, if you're looking for organic or all natural or yep. anything like that, you know to go look for that on right. the label. And that's what makes them organic and what makes them all natural, what makes them that that way. I prefer the organic just because, again, the feed we know you know is right. clean. And because I feel like turkeys, especially the free-ranged birds um, and the all-natural birds, and not all-natural so much, but free-range and organic are where I would... Uh, go to go towards just because you're going to have a better flavor. Yeah. Depending on you know with the turkeys, they have a better feed. They get to mm-hmm. go out and find what they want to eat. They're more wild, which means they're more like they are in their natural so, environment. So okay, then wouldn't if, if that's what we want, wouldn't we all go wild turkey then? Well, yeah, I like bourbon too, Bill. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, I set myself up for that one. <laughs> but but yeah, you could you could have wild. The thing about wild turkeys. Yeah. If you've ever eaten a wild turkey. No. They have a very, uh, not a very, but a more gamey okay. flavor than the uh, traditional turkeys you're used to. Okay. So a lot of people will taste a wild turkey and say it's not the yeah. same. It's yeah. a little, they're usually tougher. I mean, that makes sense. Wild turkeys run more. Okay. They roam more. So they're usually a little tougher because they use their muscles more. Okay. Um, and they're usually a little gamier. So, I mean, wild turkeys are okay. I've had wild turkeys plenty of times, and I enjoy them. But they're different than... Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I'm just curious. What, what are turkeys are raised. So, fresh versus frozen turkeys Yeah. is the next thing. Um, for, you know, a lot of people say that frozen turkeys are, like, are drier, not as flavorful. But, you know, if you're talking... That's only true, really, if you're talking organic or heritage bird. Okay. Because uh, when it comes to, like, the supermarket brands... Um, the USDA allows turkeys designated as fresh turkeys yes. to be chilled as low as 26 degrees. So obviously 26 is lower than the freezing, freezing point. point, and uh, so it allows ice crystals will still form on the meat, and it'll dry. It'll be this, uh, practically the same it's thing. A fresh bird. So yeah, so if you really want a fresh bird, which I would prefer a fresh bird, I just think the flavor is better. You're, you're Anything that's not frozen, you pick it up when they bring it in. Is basically, basically what you're doing. yeah, you would need to go organic, yeah. or you would need to get one from a local farm Farmer. or something of that nature. When we get our, our turkeys from that farm, they're never frozen. Okay, they're always slaughtered like. Right before Thanksgiving, so they're fresh. What a wonderful thought! Um, I, it is what it is. You know, I, I, hey, people I, like to think I, of their I food know, as I being know that. I and know that's that. another reason. You know, when you, when you come into into think about um, your and anim- the and what you're eating, the steak used to yeah. be part of a cow, which is alive. When you and we talked about this before, when you think about that, you get more respect for well, the food. True. So when you prepare it, you want to prepare right. it. You know, more respect because that animal, like it or not, gave their life for that meal. Now. My question to you, no matter what type of bird is it, what is your favorite part of the turkey? To eat? Yeah. Um, no, I to play with, <laughs> of course. Well, to play with, no. <laughs> to eat, um, I prefer the thighs. Okay. Okay, just because I'm a, I am like dark meat. Dark meat. I think it's more flavorful. It's, it's juicier. The thing with turkey is when you cook a turkey, you have to cook, especially a whole bird, there's no getting around it. You have to cook it until the dark meat cooks takes yeah. longer to cook. So you have to cook it until the thermometer in that thigh reads about 160 to 165 right. degrees. You pull it out, you let it rest, and mm-hmm. it goes up to the proper temperature. What happens is the breast of the turkey cooks a lot faster. Okay. So the breast is really done. If I was just cooking breast fronts, I would pull it out at about 150. Okay. So, and then it would carry up to the 160. Because the, the cooking process still done. continues when you pull it out. Right. That's, That's called carryover cooking yeah. is the correct term for that. It's still hot, so it keeps cooking. Um, so uh, what always happens inevitably is you pull it out. The, the thighs and the legs are good, but the breast is normally dry. Right. Okay. Um, so that's why I prefer the dark meat, and I like the thighs. Yeah. Um, my, my favorite part is the skin. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that goes without saying. The skin's the it's best It's so part. bad. The first time, my wife and I were dating at the time, 
and the turkey would come out of the oven and you've seen the movie the christmas story yes and everybody's there and he's getting there and he's lifting it up and taking a piece of it well i used to get yelled at by my mother-in-law because that's not good for you well the thing is is that you get the first piece of skin before they carve it mm -hmm. and i was all to this day my wife still hides it for me calls me like she needs me for something i come in i get it and then i'm gone i'm happy for the rest of the day so. well one of my actually i'm going to take that back my favorite part if i'm going over the platter of turkey and i'm picking out i'm going to take the thigh but my really favorite part is that tail piece. tail piece yes it's right there it's it's just it's really crispy yes. and it's like just it's good flavor. it's excellent that's, yeah that's actually even on a chicken and and another part that's very underrated is the oyster yes my wife eats that right it's she right loves on the back that. yes right above the thigh on the back there's these now, just two what little do you circles. do with the necks with the necks oh there's a lot you can do with the necks um you obviously give don't me cook one thing before we go to break okay. but i use it i roast it and i use it to make a really rich stock that's and i boil it down reduce it almost like a demi glace and then i take the necks and i shred the meat off that's of the what necks, my wife does and yeah. then i take that stock mount it or that uh demi glace mount it with butter take the necks fold it back into it the next shredded neck meat and then put that uh, over noodles boys that sound familiar so yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah. yeah, it is. And and it's that's the same perfect because I will even buy. Uh, you can buy them the very necks, yeah. expensively in the supermarket. So I'll take the neck from the bird yeah. and add that to another package of necks that right. I buy, and then use that to mm -hmm. make that, which is very very good. And you can even use your to make that stock. You can use your giblets. Right, and that, that, that as too. well. That yeah. way, nothing's wasted. So anyway, we got a break. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about brining versus not brining, and then we're going to talk about. Our Actually brown butter. Cooking the bird, and our brown butter is well on its way. That cool. should be done within the next few minutes. We'll strain that, and we'll let you taste okay. it. Have some bread for us to taste it with. So don't touch that radio dial. We will be back with more Just Cook It and more cooking right after these words from our sponsors. And Just Cook It is served up to you today by the Big Barn Country Store and Deli, by Park Chiropractic Center, Inc., by 4th Street Barbecue, and by the Herald Standard. And you're watching Just Cook It on Fayette TV Channel 77 and also at JustCookIt.tv, and you're listening to to just Cook It Radio here on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS. Welcome back. You're listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS, and also on FCTV Channel 77 and at JustCookIt.tv. I'm Maria Pareca here with Bill Alexander. And Bill, our brown butter is done. It smells wonderful. So if you look at it, I'm going to tilt it. You can see how it's kind of golden brown. Hopefully you can see it on, yep. the, t on the camera. And we had our foam. I actually, it was finished during break, so I turned it yeah. off. That's why it's not really <laughs> foamy. It, it almost went over the side of the pot is why I turned it off. took some preventative measures. But we're just going to strain it now. And Measure again, you can bowl. show them what it looks through the clear bowl, mm -hmm. whatever it's done, too. And you can actually... It smells good. You know what that'd be good with? Oysters. Absolutely. You can let this butter lobster. sit. Lobster. Ooh. <laughs> Everything's good with the lobster. It's good. You can let the butter sit. Okay. As it sits, it's still hot, so it's going to continue to get now, more golden. The stuff that is on top of the strainer right now, that's yeah. just the burnt residue, that's or what is it? The milk solids that brown. The milk solids mm -hmm. that brown. Okay. So we're just going to strain those out, and you can see it's kind of a golden. I'll put it up so everyone can yeah. see, but it's kind of a golden brown color, and it's going to get a little darker as it sits. Oh, really? Just move this. Yeah, because it's still hot. Remember the carryover okay. cooking that we talked yeah. about? It's a little warm, but it's not over here. So you can kind of see. Oh, yeah. It's got that golden brown look to it, that and it's going to brown more as it sits. So what we will do is I have some bread for us. Oh, cool. Oh, we get to eat. So you can taste it. <laughs> Where's, Mike when, looking at it. Where's Mike when you need him? Mike will probably drink this. <laughs> But so there's a piece of bread for you. Okay. Bread, some baguettes, and we'll just dip it and taste it. So, anyway, back to turkey tucks. This is what I would baste my turkey with, and you can see that on the video at heraldstandard.com. You just take a, either a brush or a spoon. You can spoon it over, or you can take a brush, a pastry brush, and brush it on. Um, now, this is the one thing you forgot to do when you did the video, or you ran out of time. Oh, I did do it. I made it ahead of time, but we didn't have time to actually show the whole process of making it. So that's why I thought I'd save it for Just Cook It Radio. And then that's we'll really make good. it here. So yeah, see, it's got kind of a nutty taste to it. Still got the butter. Now, generally when I make it, I would make it with, if I'm going to use it for my turkey, mm -hmm. I'd use unsalted butter. This is salted butter because I knew we were going to dip bread in it. Right. I wanted it to be seasoned. But same principle for either, whichever one you use. But if I'm going to make it for a meat or a turkey, you're going to season your meat or your turkey. So... 
it has a very familiar taste to it, so I must have had this before. Yeah, it's very common. Yeah. And a lot of different foods and different things. That is good. So that's your brown butter. Um, and that's what you'll use to baste your turkey with. Now, the other question of turkey, since we talked now, about. How do you baste yeah. your turkey? Do you Every use, half hour. Do you use one of those? Uh, no, I use either a spoon, mm -hmm. like a teaspoon, and just kind of spoon it over, or I okay. use a brush and brush, brush it, on. it on. Yeah. I, the only reason I don't like to use the brush is because the bristles sometimes will pick up the seasoning with it. Oh, that's a good point. So if you just use a spoon and kind of spoon now, it over. Now, do you just use the butter as your. Um, uh, when you baste it, or mm -hmm. do you add seasonings to that? I just use the butter. Okay. I mean, I season the bird before it goes in the oven. And what so do you use that? What do you season that with? Uh, generally, AP, AP number, number seven. seven. But salt and pepper is fine. Okay. I mean, you can use salt and pepper, and AP number seven will be available the now before the first of the we've year. We've talked about this before. We talked about this when we did the podcast, mm -hmm. and um, when we discussed this, I made a comment that my wife uses the bag. And she puts turkey in. Mm -hmm. And then every half hour she opens it and then bastes it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you make your turkey, do you just use a standard roaster? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I generally put it on a sheet pan with a rack. Oh, okay. So that more of the turkey is exposed. I mean, you can use the turkey like a roasting pan. Yeah. Um, but roasting pans have high sides. Yes. So they come up and they kind of cover the sides. I like to have the whole turkey, as much of it as possible, exposed. So Why is that? more of the skin gets crispy. Ah, makes you know, sense. more of the skin is uh, is comes in contact with the heat, okay. the crispier it's going to get. Long. Now, another way you can make your turkey even crispier is if the night before you leave it in your refrigerator mm -hmm. uncovered. Yes. And you just let it sit and it'll kind of dry out the skin and it'll right. get even crispier. Now, when you, and, and we've mentioned this, I mentioned this briefly, I don't remember if we were on the podcast or where, but we were talking about deep frying a bird. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain type of bird you use to deep fry or... I mean, because basically you can't really do anything other than that and season it. You drop it in the hot oil and then... Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people that deep fry birds... Burn their homes down. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, you have to be very careful. And I would always recommend if you're going to use a large turkey fryer, you do it outside. And have fire extinguishers concrete. handy. Yeah. Or the fire department on call. Yeah. Um, deep fried turkey is delicious. I've never it had really one is. before. I've deep fried turkeys before. But it's just it's a little trickier. Like you said, you have to be Now, how long attentive. does it take to deep fry a turkey? Not as long as it does to, to roast one. Okay. I mean, I can't give you an exact time. It's been a long time since I've deep fried a turkey. But it doesn't generally take quite so long. Because I... The I, oil's hotter. And it's right on the bird. Right. It's not, you know, in That's the air. That's true. So it, does, it's, it is quicker. Now, does it seal in more of the juices when you do that, or...? Um, I, yeah. The deep fried turkeys are really juicy because, number one, a lot of people inject them. That's like what do they standard them protocol. With? Butter, Steroids? I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Butter, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Different herbs, different things. You know, whatever you, they make, turkey injecting fluids that taste what good. What would they be? Butter, different seasonings, okay. different things. You could do your own brown butter and put it in the injector. Absolutely, and it in the skin. you can inject it with brown butter. Um, herbs, different herbs, whatever, whatever you really like. Garlic butter is a popular one. Uh, you could. Whatever you really like, you can inject into the bird, and then when you deep fry it, that oil hits the skin first, crisps it up real fast, yeah. and causes like a membrane that won't let anything else back out. Okay. So it cooks and it makes gotcha. it juicier. Um, the, the downside of deep frying is there's no uh, no drippings, so uh, you really can't make it gravy. Gravy. And that's why I don't like to brine my turkey. Because brining, you know, a lot of people swear by brining. Okay. And yes, it does make it juicier. Yes. Yes, it does make it plumper. But the juiciness, number one, it, it takes away from the turkey flavor. Because what happens is when you brine your turkey, now make sure I want to get my science right here. Um, a lot of things happen, and it uses, of course, osmosis. Where it comes Osmosis. in. Osmosis? Is that what it's called? <laughs> I, it, it, where it comes in and out, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole process. So basically, what happens is the salt and the, uh, the, salt and the liquid that you dip it in mm -hmm. goes into the turkey. Some of the juices from the turkey come out of the turkey through a permeable membrane, and then it kind of evens out in between the two. So when you pull your bird out, it's going to weigh more, it's going to be juicier, right. and, uh, it, but what you put, what, what it absorbed, is tap water and salt. Ah, so it's okay. not going to taste this turkey. It's going to really, it's that turkey flavor. Right. It's going to, you know, really take away from that turkey flavor. And the juices that you get from it are too salty to make gravy with. Oh, okay. Because it, there's a lot of salt. salt in it. Now, the other thing I've heard people do is to get, we were talking about the breasts, is to make them juicier. They actually cook it upside down. Yes. You does can do that, that. Does that work? 
You can do that, and it does work because what happens is the juices they you know they go down into the breast and then right. they pour over them. But the reason I don't like to do that because the thigh and the and the wing and well, not just the thigh and the wing, but the breast itself. There's a lot of surface area there and a lot of skin that I like crispy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And you know, a lot of people say, well, what they want to do it. What they do is they put it in the oven, breast mm-hmm. side down. They cook it, and then, like, with an hour left, they flip it right side up again. Yes. Put it back in the oven at, like, 400 degrees or whatever to try to crisp it up. Number one, crisping doesn't happen that fast. It's a process that needs to go on as it cooks. <laughs> Number two, it's not going to be as crispy as it can be. It may get crispy, but it's not going to be as golden brown and delicious as it can be. And number two, have you ever tried to flip a piping hot 18-pound <laughs> turkey? It's not fun, um, and it's not easy. So I wouldn't – I just – I don't like to do that. I don't like to – I think simplicity is the best way to do it. Um, I stuff my bird with fresh herbs, mm-hmm. you know, sage, rosemary, thyme, whatever else I can find um, or I think would, would be good in the turkey. Stuff it in the – fill the cavity with a, a ton okay. of fresh herbs. Season the outside. Brush my, my wife does carrots, onions. And what else does she put in the cavity? Celery. Yeah, celery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do that too. That's mirepoix. That's right. standard. Standard aromatics. Those are aromatic vegetables. But mm-hmm. personally, I just I stuff it with herbs as many as I can get in there. The fresh herbs, um, and then I take I, I rub the outside with olive oil. Season it very right. very liberally because you you know turkey on the skin even roast when you do big things you cut into them the inside isn't seasoned but the outside exactly. is so you want to make sure the outside compensates for the inside. That makes sense. So then I put it on the roasting pan into the oven 350 degrees rotate it every half hour okay. and baste it every half now, hour now how long how long should you cook it depending on weight no well no the number one thing about roasting a turkey about any cooking anything is forget about the times i mean you can have a general guideline in your oh, mind okay. about time but don't just say i'm gonna put it in for an hour or however Four many hours, hours, per five hours you know what i mean don't do that because you're gonna you overcook it it's gonna so be dry. the whole thermometer thing the thermometer is okay. key you have to get a prep either and you know a lot of people will buy those thermometers that they put in the bird and they tie and it'll beep when yeah. it's at a certain temperature you can use that but i prefer the old school the old round ones the thermometer top. yep and you, and i even have guided you can use a digital one you can mm-hmm. use the regular the one with the dial on it you put it in the bird and right in between where the thigh and the leg meet, right in the, th- or you should say the medius part of the thigh is the best okay. place to check it. And you check it when it hits between 160 and 165 degrees, it's done. You pull it out, game over. Sounds good. And that, it's that simple. I mean, I usually start checking my bird's temperature. I cooked a 14 pound bird. I started checking it after about two hours. Okay. I just started checking it just to see where it's at. Once you see where it's at, if you see it's at like, 140 degrees then you can guess it's probably going to it's probably going to be another half hour 45 minutes okay. until it's done and then you just keep checking it periodically yeah, and that's and it's, a, it's a slow steady cooking too at 350 right. for a long period of time right and i don't like to mess around with a lot of people they'll just say oh i put my bird in i tent it with foil yes and then i pull the foil <laughs> off and go 400 degrees why complicate it mm-hmm. if you put it and that's you know when i started learning how to cook turkeys yeah. and big birds when i was in the restaurant i asked you the cook chef, big bird no, well, not the big. Oh, okay. Birds, I was gonna worry me there for a minute. Family. Okay. I even asked him. I said, you know, I've heard all these different ways that you can cook him. Well, how do you do it? And he was the executive sous chef at the time. He said, why are you making it hard? Three yeah. fifty. Just throw it in. When it's done, pull it out. Yeah, that's, that's true. Say, and how long do you cook it till it's done? done. That's just, <laughs> now the other question for you too is, you mentioned about um, frozen turkey uh-huh. and thawing it. Yes. Um, What's the easiest way to do it? The easiest way to do it is to pull it out of the freezer and put it in your refrigerator for about uh, about five days ahead of time. Okay. And just let's say a, fr- a frozen bird, once it thaws completely, will be fine in your refrigerator for up to a week. Right. So you can, if I would pull it out four or five days ahead of time and just mm-hmm. let it sit in the refrigerator until it thaws completely. And it should be thawed by Thanksgiving. If you run into a hitch and you forget to thaw your bird or you buy it last second, like I did when I did the video for the Herald yeah. Standard, I you know I got I couldn't find. It was when we filmed that. It was before Thanksgiving. It was before the supermarkets got their birds in. Right. So I had to wait, and I had to buy a frozen one because I didn't. You know, that's all they had. And when I got it, it was the day before. Okay. So I had to. And this is labor intensive, but it works. I got a cooler. Okay. And I put the birds in a cooler. I had two of them. I put them in the cooler. You cover them in cold water. Okay. Okay. Breast side down, and then uh, and you let them go. And every half hour, you have to you drain the water, water and, and you put again. fresh water in, and you just let them sit in that cooler. And it took for a 14-pound bird, it took about seven hours. 
That's not too so bad. They, and, and it's not bad, but it's just like I said, it's very labor intensive because you have to keep changing the water because what will happen is the frozen bird will drop the water temperature. Yes. And then the water will freeze the yeah. bird and then, you, you know, yeah. you don't have, it's not thawing. So you have to keep it in that cooler so you can control the temperature. You have to keep changing your water. And then as soon as it's thawed, you can put it in your refrigerator. And just because it feels thawed on the outside doesn't mean it, it is because on the, because on the inside. inside there's usually still a block of ice yeah. that you have to deal with. Now, so the other thing, we, 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 we've done we've done the Thanksgiving meal in parts. The dressing, the mashed potatoes, the turkey. When you make all this, turkey goes in first, and then you make everything else to while complement the it cooks. while the turkey cooks. Mm, you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. The best way to do that, as I chew here, <laughs> is to, excuse me, the best way to do that is to make a prep list about okay. three, four days in advance right. at, the, at the latest. Have your list of everything you need and different things you can do each day leading up to Thanksgiving. Okay. Because, you know, have on Monday I'm going to do this. On, I'm going to make all my dressings and, you know, do this. On Tuesday I'm going to cut all my vegetables. On Wednesday I'm going to, you know, have all my stuff in place for my stuffing so that on Thursday I can mix it up and put it in the oven. Working ahead like that lets you see things more clearly. Okay. And let you time things better. So, for instance, if you put your turkey in and you know your stuffing still needs to cook, when you t temp your turkey, the turkey's still going to have to rest when it comes out of the oven right. in 20 minutes. So if you know your turkey's about a half hour away, go ahead and throw your stuffing in because that has to rest right. too. And now it's going to come out and they're going to be done at the same right. time. As far as the potatoes go, if you're making mashed potatoes, I would do those as the last second as possible <laughs> just because we talked about how when they sit they get they gummy. gummy and you know the best way to like we said to heat those up is over a double boiler and yes. that becomes a pain it takes up room on your stove so you want to do those as close to the last second as possible and the number one thing i can tell you about thanksgiving and making sure everything's together at the same time mm -hmm. don't worry about everything being piping hot right because it's not gonna it's be. not going to be right and it's not gonna not, i've never had anyone complain that yeah. this isn't hot or this you know right. everything will be warm and then as people go through for seconds and thirds it'll be like room temperature as, as we get ready to wrap this up the one thing that gets me about thanksgiving everybody is so psyched for the meal all this hours and hours of preparation to make it you all sit down. Everybody grabs everything they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's not a word being said. No, that's how you make a good meal. <laughs> and then it's over in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like rubbing your stomach like, go on, oh. Go on. I can't eat anymore. Mm -hmm. you got to be kidding me. And then the, the tryptophan and the turkey right. makes you pass out. And it's like the whole letdown just happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did all that work. But again, it's, it's, it's very good. And this year. The Steelers are playing on Thanksgiving night. Yes, they are. Yeah. I forgot all about that. That's going to be that. I, I like that. But anyhow, mm -hmm. we got to wrap everything up. Do you remember here, the so. last time they played on Thanksgiving? Did they win? Uh, no, no, I believe the last time they played on Thanksgiving was the whole Bettis coin toss. Oh, incident that's right. Against the uh, the Lions, and I read somewhere. I'm trying to find it here. I don't see it right here. Oh wait, here we go. Just give me a second. Uh, I'm not going to give you an exact number, but. Here it is. The average Thanksgiving dinner, just so you know, yeah. has 4,575 calories. And on that note, we got to wrap up a show. <laughs> yes, and we will talk to you next Saturday again, which will be after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, that's right. So to you and yours, have a very happy, safe, delicious talk Thanksgiving. Talk about leftovers next weekend. Yes, we can talk about leftovers next weekend. So if you want to call in and let us know what you have left over, we can talk about how you can make those even more delicious uh, the second go around or the third or fourth, depending on how many plates you had on Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's right. But um, either way, have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Eat as much as you possibly can. Don't worry about the calories. It's one day a year. Enjoy it. Give thanks. Be happy. And uh, we know Bill will be. Yep. Looking forward to it. So, And we'll talk to you next week. For Bill Alexander, I'm Mario Pareca. Always remember to just cook it. And we'll talk to you next week right here on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS. You have been listening to Just Cook It Radio with Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. For more information on this program and how to download it as a podcast, go to JustCookItRadio.com. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please call us at 1-855-590-0590. This has been a Million Dollar Baby production.
Hello, Fayette TV, and thank you for watching Just Cook It Radio right here on Channel 77. I am Mario Pereca. And I'm Bill Alexander. If you like what you've seen so far, you can watch the program in its entirety at justcookit.tv for food, life, and everything in between.